Christiana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, Secretary. Secretary, over here. To, the, to your right. Sorry. Thank you. I apologize. No, no, it's okay. Um, in the in his budget address, the governor stated that this budget would be will, could be funded, quote, without any tax increases on Pennsylvania families. But as you mentioned, just three short paragraphs after that, the governor proposes another severance tax. And the governor even admits in, the, in that section that the severance tax will be paid by the people, the consumers of that natural gas. Would you agree with the governor that a severance tax is ultimately paid by the consumer of the natural gas? Of natural gas? The, the, the way I understand it is that um, uh, natural resources that are uh, mined from a state and exported carry the tax burden with them. It's something that is already happening for states that produce natural gas or oil or any of the other kinds of things. Uh, and we are paying other state severance taxes currently well, because we are consumers of those products. Well, we're so consumers of other states' natural gas? Yes. Okay. So you would admit, so what you're saying, though, makes sense to me, that the ultimately the consumer of the product, of the natural resource, pays the taxes associated with that. I think that's what the governor was saying. That sounds like what you would say and I would, I would agree with. So, but the consumers of the natural gas are also Pennsylvania families, correct? My understanding is that the great majority of the natural gas that's produced here is exported. Okay, but so then you would agree that whether the governor's number of 20% is accurate, 20% is consumed within Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania families using natural gas would be paying uh, a severance tax that they're currently not paying, which would ultimately be an increase on Pennsylvania families, correct? I think that the governor's statements have been about avoiding broad-based tax increases, sales tax and income tax. I would uh, agree with you, Ms. Budget. Mr. Secretary, but, it, but he said without any tax increases in his budget. So uh, while I would agree with you that he didn't say, he could have said without a broad-based tax increase, but what he's saying is that this budget could be balanced without any tax increase on Pennsylvania families. And what you and I seem to agree on is that some of the natural gas consumed in Pennsylvania would bear the burden of a severance tax. Therefore, can we just say that Pennsylvania families will pay higher taxes to fund this budget if this budget relies on severance tax revenue? I think that, uh, again, the great majority of that revenue will come from out-of-state consumers uh, and that the impact on Pennsylvania families should be minimal. Oh, okay. Can we talk about the amount of revenue anticipated from the governor's severance tax proposal? How much revenue do you anticipate coming into the Treasury uh, in, in budget year 2018-19 from the governor's severance tax proposal? I believe the estimate is for $248 million. Uh, next year. And is that exclusively from unconventional drilling or uh, would that include conventional drilling as well? It's on the same wells that the impact fee is uh, imposed on, so it's unconventional so un drilling. Okay, yeah. and, and can you maybe just address how after the, the Supreme Court's recent decision on the casinos that this would, would not violate the uniformity requirement for taxes? Well, I'm not a justice of the Supreme Court. But um, the, uh, the impact fee has stood the test of time at this point. Um, and the, this, this proposal is, is structured in the same way and uh, should have the same effect. But the impact fee would not necessarily, fee does not violate the uniformity clause about taxes, correct? So the fact that we call it a fee um, versus calling a severance tax a tax could violate the uniformity clause if you look at the casino industry and what the Supreme Court has recently said about treating those within an industry differently? For, um, for those legal issues that have to do with um, the uniformity clause, the, the question that would go to court would be, uh, is there a rational basis to distinguish one class from another class? And so in this case, the question would be, is there a rational basis to distinguish uh, these uh, unconventional wells from other types of wells? I think you can, you know, the, the legislature has decided that there, is, uh, that there is a rational distinction between those two types of things. Do you, uh, do you think that there's a rational distinction 
between those two? I do. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary.